<laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and uh, today we're gonna tie this. This is the Brenda worm. It's a really nice pattern for imitating a polychaete worm um, and uh, and it's it's one of the, the, the really really big trending flies here in Denmark. It has caught a lot of sea trout and will continue to catch a lot of sea trout. Um, it's basically a fly that's tied on, uh, on a lot of shanks so it has an amazing amazing movement in the water and it's just uh, overall a deadly uh, deadly way of tying polychaete worms um, and, and tying coast flies in general. So, um, um, it's it's originally a fly that is maybe I think it's two years ago that this first saw the, the light of day and, and ever since then it's just become an integral part of, of many of the Danish coast fly fishermen's uh, fly boxes. So, we're gonna tie a fly today, uh, a polychaete worm, using a lot of different shanks and, uh, and you can buy the full material kit to this at Nordic Anglers. But here goes, now we're gonna tie the fly. <laughs> so, there it is, the polychaete worm, the Brenda worm. <laughs> that sounds a bit strange in English, but you know. <laughs> Um, we're gonna tie this fly now. So the first thing we of course need is a hook and things we've made quite a lot of fly tying videos uh, today so things here on my tying disc is a bit of a mess. Oh there they were. Um, we're gonna take an Arix curved gamma rose um, uh, for this pattern it, it has a nice really really big uh, hook gape here and uh, and that's really really nice for for it, ha it has excellent hooking properties and um, so this is the one we're gonna go for go with and um, the first thing we need is a tail and for this the tail is going to be made from marabou and um, in in the color uh, in the color ginger so basically I'm gonna take a marabou feather here and uh, this is a bit mangled but I think it, it will probably work it was just a feather I have had used previously, but but it will it will do the job. And basically, um, uh, when when dealing with marabou, if you do not want a, a really long tail, you can you can just snip off the ends of the the marabou here. It's important, vitally important, that you do not cut these. Basically, that you just pull them off with your fingers, so they are not you know completely uniform in length. Otherwise, it will look very abrupt and uh, and not very lifelike. So just we're just gonna have a lot of dubbing on top of this, so so it doesn't matter if it if it's a bit messy. Um, then we're gonna add basically a bit of flesh. Um, I had a bundle laid off to the side here from the one I did before. And we're going to do some use some some crystal flash for this. Not a lot, just just a small amount, maybe five or six strands um, is sufficient. Just to have a bit of a bit of sparkle, a bit of bling in the in the tail here. If if uh, if a trout is following this fly, there we go. So there's a bit of flash on both sides. Uh, one was a bit too long. Cut away in that one. And basically, basically what we will do here is, is we'll make a lot of segments of body um, uh, fairly fast um, and, and fairly easy. So the, the dubbing we use for this is, is the original and, uh, and, and uh, uh, the sub sublime uh, Salmo Supreme in, in Rainbow. And, and because uh, we're gonna have many segments and, uh, and, uh, and we, can, we can basically just scratch this out, I'm not gonna do dubbing loops. I'm just gonna, just gonna mangle the dubbing with the, uh, I don't know what this is called, but the something technique, the dubbing technique. If, if you're having trouble with this, a uh, dubbing uh, wax uh, will probably help you quite a lot with, the, with getting, uh, getting the dubbing um, on the body here perfect. But as you can see, it's it's fairly easy and fairly fast to do dubbing like this. There we go. And so all the way up towards the eye, I'm gonna make the first hackle. But before that, I'm just gonna 
try to scratch out some of the dubbing here to give it a bit more rugged and and a bit more translucent uh, feel and uh, and look here there we go now i'm gonna take a ginger uh, ginger rooster hackle and basically it's 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 just rinse and repeat from here on out because as soon as you have this first segment you're you're basically going to do the same thing uh, three more times in order to get this this worm uh, this worm pattern uh, uh, give it the right length and uh, and and give it the right movement in the water so now we're going to add the at the first of the heckles and you can of course uh, change things up in regards to the uh, to the size of this, to the number of shanks, to to the 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 the, the, uh, the different length of the shanks that that you want to use for this fly, depending on on the species that you target. But but for the Danish sea trouts, um, uh, I find that uh, to have two shanks that is about 10 millimeters long. And, and then a longer one with with a hook of, of approximately size six or eight the Eryx gamma is, uh, is is really ideal it makes the fly quite long without actually being too big um, it's it's still castable even in in fairly rough weather and uh, it, it doesn't tangle much and it's 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 just uh, it's just really really easy to use and to uh, to to fish with then I'm gonna take two of these in approximately I think these are about um, 11 10 or 11 millimeters long and I'm gonna take my pliers and then open that a bit pull out the hook attach the shank and then I'm gonna use my tying thread to close the shank here there we go Close it back up. I do not want these hackle fibers to to get in between my tying thread on this second part. And then basically, in order to cover up the transition between the shank and uh, and the hook, I'm gonna take a bit of dubbing and I'm gonna try to get it into a bundle. So I have the the, the fibers here stacked up a bit. There we go. And, and I'm gonna tie this on top of the shank. So it's it's kind of it's gonna be like a wing, but the idea here is basically to to have this, um, to be able to, to cover up the transition between the, uh, the, the, between the, the, the different segments. Tying on top of the, the, the thing that, that was facing forward. Take a bit of dubbing, make some, make a body. These flies are going straight into my uh, straight into my uh, into my fly fly box. So so uh, so uh, that's why I'm not in a hurry, but but just doing it as fast as it's it's possible to do, because uh, because I also need some of these for for my box for for fishing later on this in, this week. It really really is a pattern that just catches a lot of fish. The original Brenda, which is a very, very well-known Danish salmon fly, you know, a sea trout fly for, for coastal sea trout fishing, was, was invented by a guy called Ove Monra. And it's basically, uh, it's basically the same fly here, just on, on a hook and with three hackles. Um, um, but uh, but uh, the, the person who invented uh, this uh, adaptation of the fly and converted this uh, onto shanks and uh, and uh, and uh, and in a in a in a worm-like adaptation is uh, is is a good friend of mine. Her name is Hannah Vestergaard, and she is really really a very gifted and skilled uh, fly fisherman um, and uh, and a fly caster as well. And and she she travels a lot around the world and and has done a lot of amazing things. And, and caught a lot of fish and on the first trip she she took uh, fishing for sea trout with this pattern she caught a really really nice uh, 
really really nice uh, sea trout at about 63 centimeters on, on this pattern so so that's a couple of years ago so we just uh, fr right from the get-go we knew that this fly really was was something um, and I must say these past couple of years this fly has been absolutely slaying especially in the early in the early uh, in the early spring uh, when the when the sea trouts are are, are feeding on these uh, these polychaete worms, but it has been slaying all all year long. So so this is uh, definitely a very very good pattern to have in your fly box, and not just for the uh, for the polychaete worm uh, hatching and swarming in in the early uh, early spring, but this is a fly. The color scheme here and and the the composition is something that will catch fish all year long. Um. And of course, it's it opens up a lot of a lot of cool possibilities uh, to to actually. That's also why I wanted to do this fly again because the first video was was not that great, and uh, um, I did it alone. And, and Stefan is going to help out with this one, and um, so so hopefully this will be a better quality because this fly deserves it, um, because it's just it's just one of those patterns that just slay, you know. So next shank. <laughs> Coming up, rinse and repeat. Full throttle ahead and, and all that stuff. There we go. Off to the side with the rest of the fly. Making sure the shank is securely fastened. Take some dubbing. Funnel it into into a kind of a sausage shape or whatever. Then lay it so it's, it's, it, it covers the shank all the way around. A couple of loose turns, then tie it down. Pull out all the things that doesn't attach. And fold back the dubbing. Bit more dubbing for the body. everything back and now before I should have I should have done this but but as soon as you're done with the dubbing make sure you pull some of the dubbing out to make it oh that was a bit much oh that's okay there we go and then another haggle <coughs> you having fun Stefan oh yes <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> being the cameraman is a waiting game it is Basically, you're just sitting there, meditating on all the nonsense and, oh, well, not nonsense, but all my rantings, at least. R ranting is, I, I hope that my ranting at least makes a bit of sense. I, I it, it does to me, but I, I don't know if, if it does to all of you, but, um, but uh, yeah, you have to talk when, when you do videos like this, I think. I think that just basically to just have music underneath is is not as at least it, it doesn't work for me i like to i like to uh, uh, i like to 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 talk while i i do things <laughs> you're always talking well yeah oh. most of the time <laughs> but there's also always going great stuff there's always great stuff to talk about Stephen. That's true. there's al always things happening at least when we're together Always a new fly, always a new species. Yeah, you can always place the cast in another direction. You can always, you can always just, you know, oh, maybe it will be on that rock or that rock or, or that stone or whatever. Always something new to explore. For this last shank, I'm going to take a longer one. And this is uh, perhaps, perhaps 15, 16 millimeters long. Um, I have kind of a, a spawn makes these awesome shanks, but they also make a really really nice kit of shanks where you can you can get all the different sizes. You can of course buy a, a bag of the individual sizes. So if you know that you're only gonna tie this one, then buy the 11 millimeter and the 16 millimeter or, or whatever. But these these assortments here are pretty pretty nifty and pretty cool. And um, 
and uh, I'm really, really, really uh, fond of, of mine. Um, and because they inspire you to to actually try to incorporate more of these shanks into uh, into 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 more types of uh, of your fishing and and fly tying. I just need a beat here. There it was. So I took the slightly longer um, the slightly longer shank now, and then I'm going to attach a small beat to this one to give it a bit of weight in the front. Just a bit of weight. There we go. And as you can see, it just it's just awesome. Force the shank down. And again, a bit of dubbing to cover up the transition. The transition. And be sure not that you do not take too much when you do this, because that will make the fly too bulky. There we go. Make it go all the way around. Fold this back. Tie on top of it. Take some dubbing. Okay, I'm gonna add some more dubbing. Now don't break on me. Perfect. There we go. This should be a dubbing needle, but I couldn't just locate mine, so I just used my whip finish for this. That works fine as well. There we go. Ragworm. Oh, and I'm uh, out of hackle, so I'll have to pick the last one here, maybe. That was a bit long. This one will do nicely. Okay, so I'm cutting away the hackle, the, the final hackle. And then I'm going to turn the final hackle. Perhaps of the day, I think. This is the third video we're doing in both Danish and English today so after this is done I think I think uh, I'm done for today but that's nice I've gotten some some great great patterns into the fly box as well and it's needed because later on this week we're going sea trout fishing right Stefan we are uh, looking forward to that the past couple of weeks has been just insanely stormy and windy here in Denmark so we had to cancel a couple of trips we have diff difficult fishing right now as well. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> ah, we're, we're gonna here. get we're gonna get some on Thursday, I think. I hope. There we go, and uh, everything is covered up completely by the uh, by the bead now, and so the fly is done. You can, of course, it's it's a good idea to just basically just. Just check it out to see if the tapering is right. If if there's too much material, then you know, pick some of that out. But I must say this overall is very happy with the result. It's a bit difficult to actually brush with the, the with your brush. The only way you can do that is by taking something that is fairly fairly strong, like my um, like my whip finish here, and then you can you can basically brush the fly if if it's not uh, ideally shaped but but this is this is how it should be i did quite good there if i may say so myself <laughs> 
There you go. The shank worm in the Brenda color scheme. Two of these. Straight for the fly box. Ready to rumble. So skal vi lave en intro og en outro. So, there you have it. The Brenda worm. Done and ready to move from the vise directly into the fly box. As I said, this is truly a deadly pattern for, for imitating the polychaete worms. And in general, the way of using these shanks to, to make a long fly that has a lot of movement is really, really a nice idea. You can, as always, find the full material kit, all the materials needed to tie this fly, at our web shop. It's called Nordic Anglers. We have a very, very huge selection of fly tying, but also of fly fishing equipment in general. So it would mean a lot to us if you would swing by Nordic Anglers to see if there's anything there that you need. and. Uh, and uh, and you would help support uh, this channel and these videos by actually ordering something from Nordic Anglers. So, thank you a lot for watching. Um, oh, and remember to subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, and uh, as always, I wish you the best of luck out on the water.